Welcome everyone to our hello series. Please meet our guest today. Heather Nickerson is the CEO and co-founder of Artifacts. Prior to co-founding Artifacts, Heather served as Chief Growth and Strategy Officer of Red5 Holdings and President of Red5 Privacy Labs. While at Red5, Heather drove corporate growth, led corporate brand and service line marketing, and pursued new entrepreneurial lines of business. Before joining Red5, Heather served as an intelligence analyst with the Central Intelligence Agency, including serving as a briefer in a war zone tour in Afghanistan. Heather holds a BA in International Relations from Brown and a Master of Economics from the London School of Economics. Ellen Goodwin is the Chief Solutions Officer of Artifacts. Prior to co-founding Artifacts, Ellen served as Chief Solutions Officer of NOMA. She managed NOMA's largest strategic client engagements. As the CSO, she also directed content solutions and client services to drive the corporate product roadmap. Before joining NOMA, Ellen also served as an intelligence analyst with the Central Intelligence Agency, including serving more than one year as a briefer to a cabinet level official. Ellen holds a BA in business and economics from the University of Wisconsin, Eau Claire, and a master of public policy from Duke University. Please welcome Heather and Ellen to NASM's Hello. Hi guys, it's good to see you. Mary Kay, great to I see you. I just want to start out and tell you that when I first heard about artifacts, I was beyond excited. Anyone who knows me well knows that the only thing I truly care about is photos. I'm passionate about photos and the history and sentiment behind them. I have my um my Alexa, my uh, Echo show going on my counter every day, all day with about 1500 photos on it. So um, my parents both lived into their 90s and they both passed away within the last few years. So I didn't think I really needed anything like artifacts because I had the actual people with me every day in my life. They lived right near where I live. Now that they're both gone, I'm curating in photo form a history of their lives and what they meant to our large extended family. And now that I'm a grandmother, I'm doing the same proactively for my grandchildren. I just wanna say in the interest of full transparency that I am a total fangirl of our fix. That is the truth. It's the realization of my fever dream to organize my family history through photos. So thank you for that, really appreciate it. Appreciate you guys inventing this for people just like me. So Artifacts is about 18 months old, give or take, right? Which is crazy that it's so young and yet such, you know, such an important tool in uh, the field of, you know, family history, curating, photo organizing. You know, you've really uh, made a mark in a very short period of time. Was Artifacts a pandemic baby? <laughs> That's a great question, Mary Kay. And the answer is yes, in a way. <laughs> Although the origination of artifacts happened about six years ago, the, the idea um, was because my mother, she passed away very unexpectedly and very suddenly. And as the eldest and only girl, um, I got left dealing with 6,000 square feet of stuff. And my brothers were like, good luck with that. Um, over to you. So I had to figure out exactly what to do with all the stuff. And my mother, she had an estate plan. The taxes and the finances were actually the easy part of dealing with what happened when she passed. But it was, what do I do with the crystal? What do I do with the silver? What do I do, to your point, with the bins and bins and bins of old photos? And everyone always says, well, a photo's worth a thousand words. And I'd be staring at these photos being like, I wish they could talk. I don't know who <laughs> people are. I don't even know where they are. I mean, I, it was, I was at a loss for words. In fact, I had more tears than words during this phase, but it took me about seven months to kind of sort through like all that stuff and figure out what we wanted to keep that would tell like, our mother's story for the next generation. At the time, my daughter was only five years old and it was, we wanted to keep things that, you know, she would be able to learn the history of her grandmother 
as we have the objects in the house. And my brothers didn't have children yet, but they, they felt strongly the same way. They would want that their future children to know my mother's story through the objects. So long story short, I then spent years trying to figure out like, well, other people must go through the same situation. What do they do? And I heard so many stories from, well, I use sticky notes on the bottom of stuff and I hope that no one moves them or I use color coded <laughs> dots or I keep an Excel spreadsheet. Awesome. It's on my laptop password protected and no one knows it's there. Okay. Not so awesome. That doesn't help your family when they have to go through your stuff. So I started thinking about like, how, how can we do this better? How can we ensure that stories and stuff go together and get passed down for generations to come? And at the same time, Ellen and I, we've grown up together at the CIA. We've known each other. We've traveled the world together and with our daughters. Um, we started talking about how much fun it would be to do a company, um, our own company one day. And then COVID happened. And we were just faced with, you know, the world has turned upside down. We're at home with all of our stuff. Now's the time to do this. So we did. We formally started Artifacts in December 2020 at the height of the pandemic. And it's been a labor of love ever since then. That's wonderful. Um, yeah, I just, I, I still can't believe it's it's still so new because it's so fleshed out. I mean, you have <laughs> everything there already. And usually that's a, a much longer process, but it's interesting to know that sort of the infancy was, you know, several years ago. Um, exciting too, that the pandemic just generated a lot of new businesses. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, and because when we were home, we didn't, you know, we had the time to really ponder and consider, you know, what this is definitely filling an, a need, a niche that, and as far as I can tell, there's really no one else doing this. You really don't have any outright competition at this point. Is that correct? That's correct. Because the big differentiator for us, Mary Kay, is and we've done this, investors have said, how are you different from X, Y, Z, right? Everyone has that anchoring bias. Well, how are you like this or that? Here's the thing. We can, we can and did give them a list of about 50 companies. We stopped at 50 that deal with capturing memories and stories. That's easy. There are lots of companies doing this. We're different. We come at it from the stuff first. How do we figure out how to transform stuff from just being a burden, whether that's today, you're moving it, you're storing it, you're displaying it, you're dusting it, for goodness sakes. Um, how do we prevent it from being a burden today and tomorrow on future generations into that source of connection and joy and history and legacy and even financial um, uh, preparedness and general life preparedness? Like, how do we transform it? And our whole genesis of this was Let's make it as simple as social media. We've got that down. We have that reflex down. We know how to take a photo, add a comment and post it, right? How do we make it that simple and easy and fun, but make it secure and private by default and then empower you once you've taken that step to do what you want. Do you want to share it privately with a family member? Do you want to post it into social media or a collector's group? Do you want to send it to your insurance agent? Do you want to send it to your estate planner? Do you want to pop it in a digital will? We wanted to make all of that easy, but the starting point is the objects and all the stories and history unfold from them. Wow, that's excellent. Um, please explain just how it works. I, I know how it works, but a lot of people watching this may not. You know, technology can be off-putting for people who are not digital natives, which is a lot of people. It's actually everyone, you know, Gen X and older. Um, you know, I even see a difference in, you know, older millennials and younger millennials about, you know, their savviness with technology. So how how did you how did you begin to make technology so user friendly for especially for the generations of people who are at that curating phase who are at that you know looking back phase that that memory seeking phase so i'll i'll joke for a moment so i am not a technologist before artifacts did not do facebook did not do instagram did not do anything I used to call hashtags pound signs. <laughs> Our dev team knows that if I can use it 
and I get it and it's easy, then probably 99% of the population is right along there with me in that boat. So we kind of have a running joke that if I can do it or I can get it, like we're good to go on the dev side. But in all honesty, the way that we approach this was really keeping it as simple as possible to Ellen's point. And that's where her experience working with a data technology company, understanding how do people approach you know, using, interacting with technology, that was core from day one was how can we make this as simple as possible? Everything we thought of from, you know, the QR code function where you can, you know, simply click a button, print a QR code and literally attach it to the object to ensure that the story and the digital documents and data points are connected with that physical object. Everything had to be simple and as in as few clicks as possible. So we got it down to essentially four steps and very few clicks. And the first step we always joke is the hardest. It's choosing the object. Mm -hmm. And kid you not, we have people write to us being like, this is so easy, but I didn't know where to start. And so we kept hearing this whole, like the hardest part was step one, choosing what to start with. So we even made a little quick sheet of like where, where to start, like some ideas and suggestions for how to get going. But the step one is choosing the object. Step two is then taking a photo. And again, if you can use Facebook or if you can send a photo via email, this is even simpler than that. You literally take a photo. You can also add a video or an audio file if you want to, totally up to you, but you can have up to five media files, but you need at least one photo, one object, and then you add the story. And this is something that we spent actually a lot of time on before we launched the actual product was understanding what does story mean to people? Um, there's a lot of companies out there who will do entire storybooks of feel like your history, your family history, which is fabulous. Um, we heard from people though, who'd gotten those as gifts or used them themselves that they loved the idea of it, but they oftentimes became stressed doing it because they thought they had to be excellent writers. Or if they were getting prompted by questions, if they missed a week or two, as they went on vacation, they came back, they're just like, I now have three weeks of questions to catch up on and I don't know where to start. So we we heard over the like year of doing research that story was a burden. So when we say step three is add the story, it could be five words. My mother gave me this, end of story. It could be five paragraphs. There really is no limit in that story field, but we wanted to make sure it was very easy to use. So again, type in five words, you're good to go. And the last step is clicking save and uploading it to artifacts, which when you click save, that happens. So it really is four simple steps to get going. And then everything else that you can do once you've created that individual artifact is all part of the platform and is usually within one or two clicks away. So now that you have your artifact, if you want to make that QR code I talked about, it's a single click. Click the QR code icon, click the print button, you're good to go. If you want to download your, your artifact or your entire collection to share with your insurance agent or to share with your estate planner or your lawyer, or some folks love to download the PDF and put it in a three ring binder and make a book, great. That's one click. You click download and then you choose which file you want. So again, trying to keep it really, really simple. We last year, um, although we were at that point less than a, a year young, um, we got into the AARP Innovation Labs Accelerator Program. Um, we graduated that program last March, and we're now part of the AARP Age Tech Collaborative. Um, but for us, it was really important to be part of that AARP um, process and that accelerator to really understand how do folks in that 50 plus demographic, how do they see this? How do they view it? How do they use it? We went through the program. Um, we first week um, went through an accessibility review and got amazing, amazing scores. So we from day one had designed artifacts to be highly accessible, but we even made it even more accessible coming out of the AARP review. And we worked very closely with them too to understand, again, what does this demographic who has time to curate, who has a lot of stuff to curate, what are they looking for? So we worked with them to refine the product in that way. So we've been from day one, very conscientious about keeping it very simple but then also making it very easy and accessible for all, including my non-technologically savvy self. So <laughs> Ellen, feel free to jump in with other details since you were the yeah. mastermind behind so much of that. Well, it is a priority for you as founders because I honestly can't think of anything that's been simpler um, when I started doing it. I mean, really, it's... I, I think opening an Instagram account is a lot harder, frankly, or... Um, 
no, it's it's really, you know, the journey of of perfecting the usability of this is is actually really quite interesting. Um, the other thing that I think is part of probably the overall history of this is what a perfect, I don't even want to use the word storm because that has sort of a negative connotation, but what a perfect, you know, uh, bubble for our need as, uh, because of the pandemic to become more tech savvy, like, you know, using QR codes instead of menus in restaurants now, right? And, uh, you know, all those kinds of things that may be using Zoom. I mean, Zoom was unknown to most of the world, you know, three years ago before the pandemic. So all of these things, you know, you uh, producing this digital tool to help us, it's, it's kind of a, a cool marriage of using really sophisticated technology in a user-friendly way to preserve memories. It's, it's just kind of a, a neat full circle thing. You know, most of the artifacts I would think that people are currently artifacting are things that happened long before anyone heard of the iPhone, for example. And now, and now you can contain all of your possessions on your iPhone. What, what an amazing full circle moment. But Ellen, I wanna ask you a question. So in a, on a recent blog post on your website, you said that you are neither hoarder nor minimalist. And I identify with that because that's probably how most of us would describe ourselves. How will using artifacts help us manage our stuff if we're kind of in that middle ground? <laughs> Yeah, I, I do think you're right, Mary Kay. I think a lot of us sit in the middle, but boy, there's so much pressure to go to one ex to the extreme, right? There's a lot of social pressure right now of like oh, the, minimalism, right? And, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's <laughs> like a bad thing. It's like, I feel like you know, sugar or something, <laughs> retaliating a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I, I do think that you know part of the usability for us is like we have become habitual artifactors. It's my default, right? And and that helps us find you know smoother and easier. Ways of doing things. But for me, when things are coming into my home, I'm looking at them differently now. Right. So like whether my daughter, you know, my daughter bought, uh, brought home a few things from school. There's, there's a lot less coming home from school. She's in middle school now. And I looked at it very differently and I was like, well, tell me about this. What, what did you make? And it was this drawing in French and it was this house. And I was like, so cool. What are we going to do with it now? You know, after she told me about it and she's like, We'll keep this one. And I was like, like, keep, keep, or are we going to artifact that? <laughs> you know? um, and we artifacted that because it's easy to take that photo. But what's better is I recorded her on video, like 30 seconds telling me what it was. And that's with it. So now I have her preserved in time telling me what that thing is. So I think the artifacts helps me reflect more on what's coming into the home and whether it's meaningful or just a thing. I mean, I have just things, of course I do, but a lot of my things are meaningful. And I, I do look around me all the time and I'm like, oh, that's actually a really good story. You know, my, my friend and I went to Malaysia and I came back just with a hairpin and, you know, I see it sitting on my desk and it can be junk and I can record the story and someone still might get rid of it and that's okay, but they've got the story. Um, and so I do think that that's really helped me in terms of like, I can deal with getting rid of some things that even I, not being that sentimental, but just have been attached to and used to looking at, it's just sitting there. Um, it helps me get rid of some of the clutter sometimes, and it helps me make sure I have that reassurance if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, they know what this is, you know, kind of feeling. Um, are, is anyone using this as a photo album exclusively, like not for things, but just a true mm -hmm. photo album? Because when I do have my uh, Echo Show rotating 24 hours a day on our kitchen counter, so often I wish there was like a an audio component. Yeah. Just you know, just a half a second, yep. just saying what it was. So are people using it exclusively as a photo album? Would you say? We do have, I don't know that anyone's using it exclusively that way. We do have a lot of people artifacting photographs. Um, you know, we're very different from, a, we're, we're clearly not Google Drive or something like that, where it's 10,000 photos and here you go, um, whether they're organized or not. <laughs> um, the idea here is a little bit different and, and what we're watching and observing and people are reporting to us 
usually it's, you know, I'll use my daughter again as an example. I have a million photos of her swimming, <laughs> million of them, right? But there's that one photo when she finally got that USA swimming time that she was striving for and she's pumped. And I have the photo, I have a snippet of her swimming the race and I tell the story of that day. So it's much more about those key moments and like who's in that photo, what was it about? Why was it special? It's about really those really special photos. And what some people do, especially genealogists and especially people downsizing, is they they are dealing with a lot of photos that fill out a longer story or a bigger history. So what they're doing is they're artifacting and it's very clever of them. And where we have the field location, which is optional, they're actually putting in pathways or account information for the rest of the photos are here. So they're artifacting the ones that are really special and they're telling you where the rest are if you need to grab them. And I think that's clever uh, kind of balance because we aren't a vault storage of 10,000 photos, but you can capture what's most important. That's so important. I'm so glad we landed on this little piece of it. Um, that's a really great idea. And I think that uh, that makes so much sense to me as someone yeah. who hoards photos. Well, I dealt with, a. I was talking with a woman last week and she and her family divided the photos. Um, their parents passed away. Uh, each of them got a box and they're artifacting photos. Each of them are. And they, they created an invite only circle on our platform where basically you can invite people in. It's like a chat group, but with artifacts and the artifacts shared into the circle, other circle members see. And they're, what they're doing is clever. They're artifacting the photos and sharing them with each other and giving each other edit access because a lot of the photos they're older and they it's from their parents um parents their grandparents and they don't know who's in them or the stories so they're artifacting and sharing them to say do you know who that is do you know who that is and they're filling in the information with each other collaboratively and so that's also been very interesting to watch recently oh that would be wonderful for our uh clients for sure let me ask you this so if i purchased Say I purchased the sort of top level of membership, um, but I wanted to share an album or share some photos or uh, artifacts with others. Do they have to have the membership as well? They do not. This is amazing. Yeah. So this is we're, we're built as what's called freemium in the business. So the reason we did this, there's lots of reasons that businesses will do this. For us, it came down to a couple of critical factors, one of which is we wanted to guarantee that you, you know, you, Mary Kay, could share that artifact and someone could create a free account and see it, even if it was private. We didn't want you to have to make it public for that person to be able to see it. And we didn't want to force them to buy a membership in order to see it either. So you can create that. You can even create the invite only circles, invite people in. They don't need a membership, but they can see the artifacts going into that circle. But by having freemium, they can also create five artifacts. Anyone, anyone on this call can create five artifacts for free and just see how you like it. You know, it's very simple. We have an app, we have it on the web, you know, a web-based platform too, and you can try it for free. And that, and that was important for us as well, because I think seeing is believing, you know, a lot of people say something's easy or fun, but like, I'd rather Rather try it myself. So that's how it works. And, and no, you don't have to have an account to do that. But the, the top tier does, um, it's $89 a year and it does give you your account and three to give away for free. And so that is how you can bring in people on fixed incomes. This was important in our conversations with AARP. You can bring in those fixed income, uh, the oldest among us or retirees or otherwise not um, with a uh, regular income. You can bring in those reticent family members who are like, I need your input, but I know you're not going to buy it. Here you go. Like my brother. Uh, so the, that's that's what happens with the $89 level. Oh my gosh, that's that's so wonderful. One of the other things I noticed on your website is your commitment to both honoring personal privacy, but also building your arty community um, among your artifactors. Uh, how is artifacts managing to do both? That's a great question. And one that has been at our very core from day one, along with keeping it simple, is ensuring that artifacts helps you protect your privacy and ensure that everything that you put onto our platform is yours and yours alone. So from the very beginning, artifacts, anything you create are by default private. So you have to choose to either then privately share with friends and family, 
do so via email. You can pop a link into a text. Um, if they're members of Artifacts, you can share via screen name, but that's all done privately. We do, however, have the option that if you want to do it to make it public, you can make it public. Now we have an entire gallery on our site of, of artifacts people have made public. Um, sometimes folks will make an artifact public like our genealogist or people who are chasing family histories and stories, they wanna fill in the details. Ellen's got a great example. She and her family, they she had a ring from her grandfather who had fought in the Korean War. And the ring was a beautiful silver ring with a dove and the word soul on it, but no one in her family knew the history of the story of it. So she popped it into a, made it public. She artifacted it, made it public, popped it into the Facebook group for a Korean War um, Facebook group. And within minutes had was corresponding with someone from Seoul, Korea, who was giving her information about that ring. So we recognize that the power of artifacts is the ability to also crowdsource or source from your communities information you may not have. And this became really apparent to us. Um, we did our, our beta. We, we first launched artifacts. It was closed as 125 people were the initial members. And we had folks telling us it was like a museum to humanity that they have these things and others have these things. And if you put the pieces together, you get this great story. That's not just your story, but it's either local or global history. So we wanted to make sure that you could remain completely private, or you also have the option to go public if you want to, but that's not required. Another really big thing for us is ensuring that again, your data is your data. It's not ours. So we don't ever, we'll never sell your information. Um, we are completely ad free, and this is really important. There are no, if you pop onto artifacts, there are no distracting ads in the sidebars or on the top headers. Um, no one's going to track or follow you from the site. Um, we are, we've built it to be essentially a private community for those that want to engage in stories and stuff. As far as the building community, it's getting out and working with folks like you all and the senior move managers, um, working with folks in senior and independent living facilities, genealogists, um, a lot of folks in estate planning and insurance. But again, building a community around people that are working with and dealing with and, and loving stuff. Um, we last, this past spring, we had a series, Evenings with Artifacts, where you brought in nine different guest speakers. Uh, Matt Paxson, who's on our advisory board, is one of the first. He kicked it off for us. Um, but it's engaging and having conversations, bringing thought leadership into the world of stuff and getting people to stop and think like, hey, what is this? Why do I have this? What's going to happen to it next? Is that when we say building community, it's really getting people to start talking about the stuff that they have with their loved ones um, and bringing in expert, experts who can help them better understand exactly what is the stuff and what are the options for it. That's great. Thank you for um, explaining that in greater detail. As you both know, NASM is a community of professionals that help older adults, individuals of all ages, and families downsize, declutter, and or move. What should our move managers be telling their clients about the value of artifacts? It seems like a natural fit for anyone downsizing, but how would you tell, for example, an 82-year-old couple who is leaving their home of 46 years, that this digital tool will preserve their cherished mementos for generations. How do you get someone who is not a digital native to truly understand the transfer of that bowl on their dining room table into the Artifacts website? Yeah. So we've been living this firsthand with a number of our members, helping them artifact as they downsize, and also working with other senior managers who are doing the same for their clients. Um, I think in keeping it simple, it's you keep the memories and maybe not all the stuff. And that's just the reality when you're having to downsize is that you, you can't take everything with you. And then how, how do they understand it? It's doing the first artifact together. And it can either be virtually doing it. Again, it's an online platform. So you can have a Zoom call and walk them through it. Or when we get to do it in person, it's incredibly heartfelt because they, they see how easy it is. And I, I think it was last May or June, I was working with a member here in DC, I'm based in Washington, DC, and she wanted to start the downsizing process. But before she hired a NASM mood manager, she wanted to do some artifacting. And I went over, did an in-person session with her, 
And within a half hour of showing her that first artifact and how to capture those details and take the photos, we got her signed up. She got her account. She got up and running. We did one artifact together. She literally took the iPad from my hand and was like, that's great. You can go <laughs> sit on the couch. This is a lot of fun. And she started doing it herself. And I was like, well, I'm here for the next two hours. <laughs> I'm happy to help. But it was that like it to Ellen's point, seeing is believing. Um, I think when I was at conference and I spoke with a lot of folks at conference um, back in October, and if you're trying to communicate to your clients the value, because it's I think it's a great way for you all as move managers is to add billable hours here. You have time to to help your clients. And kind of the tagline is you're going to help them tell their story preserve their history and build their legacy one object at a time. And that can also, it helps sometimes moving or downsizing can be stressful or sad for those involved and in having to physically move. Artifacting can make it very happy and joyous. And again, once they do the first couple of artifacts, they're like, wait a sec, it's okay to let go of that giant piece of dining room furniture, which is not going to fit in my new, you know, apartment and probably doesn't have a whole lot of financial value. Like I've artifacted it. I've kept the memories of the family dining room table. It's okay to let it go. So again, I think it's that whole seeing is believing and just really helping communicate. This is a secure and fun way to keep those memories and keep the history and preserve it all, but letting go of the objects. It's okay. Oh, for sure. Well, the thing that I think is kind of interesting about the marriage of artifacts with senior move management is uh, when an adult child, for example, uh, hires a senior move manager to help her mom uh, move from the longtime family home of 40 plus years into an independent living community. Oftentimes that adult daughter feels like maybe she has outsourced the adult daughter role, the oldest girl in the family role, because she's hired a move manager, right? But what's kind of cool about artifacts is, you know, our senior move managers can be doing all of the, the really hard, you know, difficult physical work, uh, organizational work. I mean, it's, there's, you know, it, there's a lot of moving parts to, to uh, a later life move. They can be doing all that. And then the adult children can be doing the fun stuff like artifacting right alongside as the senior move, maybe in the same room, maybe a couple of rooms away, maybe later in the week after the senior move manager has been there. So it's really a great companion to move management, isn't it? I am so happy you said that, Mary Kay, because you literally just painted a photo, like a picture of what my life was like this past weekend. I kid you not, we are helping my mother-in-law downsize. Um, from her 2,400 square foot home into an 800 square foot apartment and in independent living community in Northern Virginia. And we are working with a NASM professional to help with that move and transition. And we literally sat with her while some of the hard stuff was being done this weekend. We sat with her, she got in her easy chair recliner and we started pulling off objects from the shelf. And we're like, tell me the story about this. And we're artifacting with her. And it went from being like a sad, like, I'm having to move again. This is now the second time she's downsized. Like she, they first had a house in Florida. They're now in Virginia, now moving to independent living. But it was one of those things where kind of the, the sad, like, I don't know what to expect today became all smiles within minutes. And she's reminiscing and she's telling these stories and we're capturing the details. And then, you know, lovingly packing these objects like in the boxes to, to go on to their new home. And then the other really neat thing too, that I think is a great resource for senior move managers. We also have within artifacts, um, we've partnered with heritage auctions and any um, individual with artifacts that has a paid membership can get a free valuation um, for any of their artifacts. And we experienced that this weekend where um, my mother-in-law has a very large amount of beautiful crystal collected all over the world. And we have no idea what some of this is worth. So being able to artifact it and then click the, this is again, the one click, click a button, what's it worth? It goes off to heritage valuations and within five to seven business days, we'll have a valuation attached back into the artifact of what this is worth. And then that can help us or help the move manager with the family make the decision. Do we keep this? Do we sell it? Do we donate it? What do we do with this if we're really not sure of exactly either what it is or what it's worth? So there's a lot of, I think, benefits of where, to your point, you can definitely have family involved in the move process, working with senior move managers with artifacts. And Ellen? 
Yeah, and I wanted to say, Mary Kate, the other thing that we've experienced, and this is directly with NASA um, move, move managers as well, is like my parents are in the process of preparing to leave their home of 43 years to downsize because they're going to be moving into a blended community, independent and memory care. And what I hadn't thought about in advance um, as we approach this is the need for a buffer in a sense. So sometimes the homeowners can really get in the way of the process um, and, and that can create its own complications. And so artifacting sometimes is also this nice buffer where it creates space for the NASA professional to do their job <laughs> um, without the interference that, that can happen. So. That's a great point too. The other thing is, I think you both have said this in different ways, um, but you know, when I was going through uh, our parents' home with my sister, I have three brothers, but of course it was the two, the two girls. Um, we were shocked at, we, we took a lot of photos and, and sent them around to uh, our brothers and to the 15 collective grandchildren. And we were sort of shocked by what uh, everyone wanted to save. And I think that's the beauty of artifacts is you can save the the fancy stuff the you know the expensive stuff but you can also save all of that little stuff that might get lost and slip through the cracks in a move without artifacts right it might just be like oh that was you know that's not worth anything let's put that in the goodwill box or you know i love all of that smaller stuff that's where that's where the living was, right? It wasn't in all the Waterford in the curio cabinet, right? In the dining room. It was in all the little stuff. The, you know, maybe the the little figurine. I, I remember, you know, just fighting tears when I saw a figurine one of my daughters gave my mom on her nightstand. And it was, if it was a dollar fifty at some, you know fair at some school fair or whatever, it would have been too much. I mean, it was just the tiniest little nothing figurine. And yet when we sent everything around, that daughter said back to me, did you happen to see, you know, and she described it and it's like, yes, it's right here. It's right here. So it's, it's all about, you know, the big stuff and the little stuff, isn't it? It's Absolutely the case, Mary Kay. And you know, it's funny. Uh, we have a piece on our website called uh, Lessons from Artifacting My Mother. And what happened was I made a list before I went to go artifact with her. And half the list, she's like, oh yeah, that has a good story. It's meaningful to me. And she tells me the story. The other half, she's like, yeah, no, I don't know. I got it at a garage sale. And I was like, no, no, I have my own story. So like your daughter, I was like, that meant something to me. And my mom would have gotten rid of it. But I was like, no, hands up. I want it. So there's also that like preserving histories. And we all have different versions. We all have different memories and relationships. And so we can all take a turn, as you're saying, like if it's artifacted, it's really easy to share and be like, who? And we even have a field that we release called in the future. It's prodding you to think about that in the future. What do I want to have happen to this object? Do I want to sell it? Do I want to donate it? Do I want to bequeath it to a specific person? And it gives you that mental space to be like, oh yeah, what do I want to do with this someday? And if you say you want to sell it because you're preparing for a move, good job. You can even set a reminder. Remind me in six months. I got to get this out the door, right? So we're thinking ahead like that. And we're even, um, we're about to release a page next month called Allies in Stuff because we don't solve all the stuff problems. We are not move managers. We are not uh, grief counselors who are dealing with stuff after loss. You know, we are not a lot of these things. So we want to point people towards these allies who can help them and they'll open their eyes to the, the resources that are available in a fun way. Some of that's art. And so you're going to see a piece from us coming soon that is an artist who takes all those little statues, all those tiny bits and bops and tchotchkes, and she makes wreaths with them. They are beautiful custom wreaths and it ends up with all these little things from your life that are meaningful to you and you can hang it as a decoration versus dumping them in the trash. Um, so we look at stuff from a lot of different angles, including the artistic expressions. You surely do. That's really impressive. Um, you know, I collect Santa ornaments. I have a whole tree in the house that's separate from the main tree that's just Santa ornaments. And over the course of this last holiday season, I saw someone on Instagram who had a wreath made 
of just the Santa ornaments because I was thinking, well, when we move into assisted living, we're not going to have two trees, yes. right? Make it a wreath. We're going to have we're going to have a wreath uh, uh, made of our Santa ornaments. So, yep. but there you are. You know, always thinking ahead. It's just so impressive, <laughs> you guys. I, I want really, to be hopeful. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just love it. Um, so I heard the other day that um, people are giving artifacts memberships, um, you know, as gifts, and what a great idea that instead of like when um, a friend or a relative passes away, instead of, you know, spending a hundred dollars on, uh, you know, a funeral floral arrangement that'll last, you know, five days tops, they're giving an artifacts membership. Are you seeing a lot of that? Um, we are seeing folks do this and it's very heartwarming when it happens. We say, give artifacts in lieu of flowers. And it's very powerful because again, Ellen said it earlier, we all live our lives, but people we interact with know us at different moments in our lives, or maybe they have different photos of us. When I, you know, my friends when I was 17 aren't the same friends I have now in my forties, but if something happened to me tomorrow, you know, I would want my daughter to be flooded with artifacts of people that knew me in my teens, my twenties, my thirties. And it's really like, we've We've been overwhelmingly welcomed into the the death community. Yes, there is such a thing, um, <laughs> but we we've, we've made a lot of really great um, friends and colleagues who are helping people cope with after loss. And artifacts is one of those ways where you can keep the memory and the story alive. And that is one thing where I wish you know, I wish my mother had artifacted, and I wish I had artifacts you know, when she passed, because I would have loved to have had everyone who attended the celebration of life ceremony been like, please send me an artifact. I'm thrilled you signed the guest book, but I would have much rather have had an artifact in the story about her life. Because again, that's, it, it gives such context to all the lives that we've lived. So we are very happy seeing that folks are doing this. Um, Ellen's had a really good example with a individual who lost a child. Do you want to share that, Ellen? Yes, I think it's, um, these are tough moments, aren't they, right? And we had a woman who lost her 16-year-old son in a car accident. And, you know, who we all take a breath as parents. And, you know, it was a, a split household. And she heard about me. She lives here in Austin through a neighbor or whomever. And she said, you know, I don't know all his stories. I don't know, you know, tennis was his thing with his dad. I don't have... All of his moments. And I want to figure out, you know, can you show me artifacts? So I know how I can ask people to send me artifacts about my son, because it's free. As we said, create an account. One of your five free artifacts could be that memorial artifact. Uh, and so that's, it's something meaningful. And, you know, last week I was in Tel Aviv at a conference presenting about this, talking about technology and its role in legacy and end of life and how we can both be better prepared, but also help people through grief. You can send someone an artifact anytime who's who's lost someone and be like, I found this photo or I found this object that I bought when I was on a trip with them or whatever it is, nobody is going to be sad. And, and frankly, what we experienced here was she basically said, I can't hear the stories right now. Like I, I'm grieving. It's not now. And I'm going to forget them. But I sure wish I had them to reflect on. And that's where the artifacts came in. Um, and I do see that question. This is directly on point with a question that was asked earlier, is that um, what happens when the account owner passes away? So what we've done is when we were building artifacts, I read an article about a guy, a researcher at UC Davis who helped Facebook figure out how to memorialize accounts. And I was like, I should talk to him. So I called him up. He took my call. <laughs> and now we're thick as thieves. But I, you know, so what we did is um, when you create your artifacts account, you can set a primary and a secondary legacy contact. It'll notify them automatically and say, here are your rights. Um, so if I pass away, my daughter and my husband or my contacts, they will have the right to go to artifacts and say, we would like to memorialize these artifacts in place. They'll get a little black banner. No one will be able to edit them and they will continue there or they can transfer them into their own account into a special collection and they can retain these artifacts. So we give them the options or they, they might say, I'm just going to take it all down. And that's absolutely fine. They can download the entire collection, but we did build in those. We are also about to release a feature where you can click a toggle. Some people um, came to us like, you know, the community speaks. Uh, 
There's a lot of research. We've talked openly about the research folk, um, that we're looking at both into dementia as well as online identity and mortality. And they came to us and said, what if I wanna donate my anonymized data to research? Um, so we will be releasing a feature where you can say, uh, by default, the answer is no, but you can opt in if you would like to donate your artifacts data to research down the line. Wow, that's awesome. I can really see, you know, the value of that five artifact uh, free membership. Why wouldn't every senior move manager in NASM give that as a parting gift? No, seriously, right? Where it doesn't cost them a dime. But, you know, we always say what makes a NASA member special is not always, you know, what they do, though they do a lot, it's what they know. And this is sharing another, you know, tool, some knowledge with their clients for after the move job is done. Um, I think, I think realtors, I mean, this has so much potential for so many professions to just get people started. And then when they see the ease of use, you know, that's going to be uh, it will definitely translate from that five artifact membership to whatever. And I have to say, you guys, the $89 Arty Unlimited membership is crazy affordable. It really is. I mean, when you see, and that comes with all your bells and whistles. I mean, everything. I don't understand how everyone in America <laughs> around the world isn't using this. It is, you know, it's dinner in a movie, right? You know? That's what you pay anymore to go to dinner and a movie. And then you've got this for a year of unlimited artifacting. And I'm not trying to be your sales force here at all. I am just, as I said earlier, fangirl. This is just a really, really extra. You know, we normally do not do these types of Hello Series with vendors. We really don't, generally speaking. But artifacts are special. And so that's why we invited you on. Um, I, there are some questions that are in the Q and A box, so we do want to get to them, but, um, I, and I have more questions, but we'll just have to come back another day, but we do want to get to some of our members questions. Jennifer. Well, you already addressed the question about what happens to the account when the owner passes away. So, um, more of a, I, I guess, a, uh, from our dear friend, Cameron early in Australia, uh, what a great system. There have been a couple of companies here in Australia that have tried a similar concept, but the simplification of your system is genius. I would like to contemplate offering the system as a white labeled bolt on our service offering in our tech assistance package, which is a fee for service offering of ours at Golden Years Home Transitions. I wonder if I could have a chat with you about how we might work through all of this. We're happy to hear the praise. Thank you so much. And we're happy to chat. We're actually doing our first marketplace integration right now. We'll be um, appearing shortly in a 50 plus community here in the US. And um, we'll be it will artifacts will be available through their marketplace. But anyway, we'd love to love to chat. We're always open to to hearing new ideas. Um, here's one from our uh, good friend, Kathy Gordon, um, in Kingston, Ontario. Can you show us an example of the view of an artifact site? Yeah, I thought I would go ahead. Um, Mary Kay, you said you love photos. So I thought I would just jump to a photo. Uh, it, it's a simple one, but it's funny. Uh, so let me go ahead and share screen. And I hope I make people laugh. Um, can, you all <laughs> see, can you all see my screen okay? Yeah. So here's the thing. I took a picture of this photo when I was home. This is my mother. Because it caught my eye. My mother does not play tennis. Like, no way, no how. Does my mother play tennis? Why on earth is she playing tennis in this photo? So one generation removed, I don't know the story. It is baffling that my mother is in a tennis outfit and holding a tennis racket. I mean, maybe to squat at a bat, but not this. So my daughter saw the photo on my phone and said, who is that? So two <laughs> generations removed and my daughter doesn't know who's in the photo. So that's where we get really grumpy when people say a photo's worth a thousand words. It's just not. So I asked my father and I asked him on video. Well, yeah, this picture is really kind of cool because when Mary Lou was at Wabanti, it was a new campus and she got to be in tennis and they didn't have tennis nets. <laughs> so well, yeah. My mother was clearly very bad at tennis, no nets, and she still only managed to be. So now I have the story. I have my dad on video, which is like remarkable in itself because he does not like video. I have the story and it's here. It's safe. That's great. That That's perfect. That's a, a good example of 
um, what Kathy is looking for. Are there any, oh, there's more questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if someone wants to, uh, to make all of their items public, can they be anonymous? You have a screen name on Artifacts. And so you're anonymous behind that screen name. I personally have shown my name with my screen name. That's an option you have to elect into in your account profile. You would have to choose to do that. Um, so your, your anonymity is protected by your screen name. Just choose wisely. Don't, don't make it your name. <laughs> um, do you have a short video that members can share with their clients? Yes. Yes, we do. And I can pop the link into chat. Okay, great. Um, some of my senior clients don't enjoy using digital platforms. Can you print the collection for them? Yes. So when you go to your artifacts, you can always choose to export it to PDF. And that's what some folks do. Um, they like to just browse through it that way. So you're welcome to print it to PDF. Okay. That is the last question that I see. Um, I have uh, one I'd like to ask. So look into your crystal ball. What's the future for Artifex? Have you checked all your boxes as the founders of this amazing tool? Or do you see more innovation coming in the future? Um, we definitely see a lot more innovation coming in the future. Um, if you know us, you know that we are super duper type A planners and we love Excel spreadsheets. So we have three years mapped out of all the things that we hope to be able to do with artifacts. And I will quickly turn over to Ellen to share some sneak peeks. And she is a lot of the mastermind behind the tech piece of this. <laughs> sure, blame me. <laughs> I'm the one that knows how to say hashtags. So that's why you get me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, no, absolutely. So a lot of where we're focused right now um, is on the integration side of things, right? So what I mean by this is how can we make it one click to insurance, one click to wills, one click to you want to sell it. Here are opportunities that we vetted. You might want to check these markets, right? So how do we make it all of the management of the stuff that much simpler? Um, so integrations are a big piece of that. Um, now, you've surely heard a lot about blockchain, uh, Web3, and you're kind of like, I don't know. We're keeping an eye on it. We've even done some sandboxing on it. But from a very different perspective, what we want to do is make sure that from a legal perspective, we can onboard your identity. We know who's who, who gets what, and you can even lock down physical assets on blockchain and say that artifact that represents a physical thing, no one can sell that unless they have the keys on the blockchain. We're looking at future technologies to consider whether or not they'll solve a problem here that we want to address for our users. There's also simpler things like offering inline translation for people that are making up artifacts public in multiple languages. We're also looking at, we have a lot of folks have asked us to be able to put their um, artifacts on maps to show where they bought them and where they got them. Another feature we get a lot of questions about are who has artifacts like mine? So if they're public, who has the same Star Wars figurine as me? and they want to read their story, right? So there are a lot of like, I artifacted this thing. What else is there like this? Um, we've also tested some stuff around visualization. It's highly imperfect people. So watch out. Google Vision is not perfect. This is, shouldn't be a surprise, but it's true. <laughs> um, so we're testing it and watching it. It causes a lot of frustration right now with inaccuracies. Um, but we're looking at things like that. Just how do we get you more information about your object? How do we help you? You know, some people want hey, I want to store this piece of artwork. Can you tell me where to store it? You know, can we make these connections easier so stuff isn't a burden? Great. Well, I think we're closing in on our hour. We are so lucky to have both of you with us. I, I know you're always working on artifacts and um, we just couldn't be happier to be associated with, with both of you with artifacts. Um, it's just, it's a great tool. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Mary Kay and Jennifer. We really appreciate the opportunity and we're very proud members of NASM. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Thanks everyone. It's our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.